truth. What is up guys? It is Daniel and today I am going to be reviewing Windward. So what is Windward? Well, Windward is a top-down sailing trading game where the objective of the game is to generate more money either through trading and completing quests or becoming a pirate and pillaging towns to buy larger and larger ships and to help a faction conquer the entire map. A combined single player with co-op elements lends itself well to this game's replayability, although the game over time does become extremely repetitive. And with that, let's get right into the review, guys. So basically, as I stated before, Windward is a top-down sailing trading game, and that's basically essentially what it is. If you love trading games, you will love this game. As you can see in the background, the whole the whole, the whole point of the game is you're basically a ship captain sailing between towns, uh, trading, doing quests, such as delivering passengers, delivering cargo, and that's essentially the entire point of the trading mechanic of the game. There also is a combat uh, as, uh, aspect to this game where you can become a pirate or you can simply fight pirates uh, as one of the as one of the five factions in this game uh, and those are basically the main points of gameplay that you're going to be experiencing so as you begin this game and you hit single player you will be prompted with a map uh, and you will be given one of the choice of the five factions uh, the pirates which you don't you can't really join at the beginning but you can join throughout them throughout the game as you play uh, the valiant which are the combat faction which I joined when I played uh, the consulate, which are the which are the jack of all trades faction, they're good at everything. Uh, th the sojourn, which are the exploration centric faction, and the exchange, which are basically the trade oriented faction. So after you pick your faction, you will um, be asked where you want to spawn in on the map, which is basically the, the faction hubs. Um, so I spawn in the bottom left uh, of my map with the valiant, and then you are put right into the game with no tutorial at all there is absolutely no tutorial i started this playing this game and i had absolutely no idea what i was doing i spawned in on my ship i had no idea where i was going the map isn't revealed yet and you have to explore around to discover the map so i had absolutely no clue what i was doing it took me about 30 45 minutes to finally realize that i have to go to towns find the quests accept the quests go to all the different towns and uh, do those quests and listen to the rumors so I can learn how to trade and many other things like that. And because of this really bad start to the game, I think it's, it sets players off on the wrong foot for this game. And while there are really, there are a lot of positives about this game, I think it's a really fun game. P negatives like this where you have no tutorial, so you start off not really knowing what you're doing. I still don't really know if I'm playing the game properly. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to be conquering lands, if that's a good idea, or whether I should just be upgrading the towns in the hub for the Valiant, which is, which is the faction I was a part of. So I think that really sets players off on the wrong foot when you begin. And now let's get into the positives and the negatives of this game. Today I'm going to be starting with the positives of this game because I feel like they really are very important, they're very important aspects of this game. So. I personally think, I, maybe this is just me, I feel like I'm a little bit of a sucker for this, but I think the art design in this game is great. I think it looks amazing. As well, that goes along with this, is the awesome sound design. The sound design is great. There's a four, three or four songs that play throughout the game that I think are really, really good. They change off relatively quickly, so I don't feel that I'm getting the repeat of the same song over and over and over again, which would be a huge problem, and that's a really big problem with other games that I've reviewed as well. Also, another positive of this game is that potentially this game could have hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay. If you wanted to explore every single tile of this map, you could. And I, it took me almost three hours to explore my whole area and trade up with all the, with all the towns so I felt like I was ready to move on to the next area. So that could possibly lend well to this game's time and how much value you could get out of it. And while the positives are very good, there are a lot of negatives in this game that I think are really important to mention. The most important one, in my opinion, is that there is no story. If you ask me what story, what the story is of this game, there is none. I have no idea what's happening. If I said before you get placed right into the game, you have no idea what's happening. So there is really no story. The only really story quests you get are from towns that give you, that give you jobs to go to other towns and such. And as I just said, the quests are also, there's, they're extremely buggy. There are certain quests that ask you to get resources such as tobacco 
that you can't buy in your area and since you're not a high enough level you can't really go and finish this quest and another example would be where I was told a quest to I'll get a bonus if I killed an enemy but I would also get a bonus if I didn't kill an enemy so I got a bonus either way but it seems kind of redundant that it's telling you to kill an enemy but then not kill an enemy also I have to mention the combat the combat is basically non-existent just like the story there really isn't any combat the only combat you'll be doing is pressing v your v key which is your broadside key clicking on the enemy you will shoot your cannonballs at them and that is basically all you do you control with your left mouse so the controls are relatively simple which is sort of a positive but it can also be a negative because i don't feel like i'm really doing anything i think i spent more time looking at my phone than i really did playing this game and that's a huge problem, especially in combat. I want to feel like I'm doing something and killing pirates, which will help my faction. But I'm not really doing anything. All I'm doing is holding my left mouse. You can see on the screen, my mouse is just slowly moving, which I'm controlling my, my ship. And that's all I'm really doing. I think there are also many graphical and visual bugs that I've experienced. I think one especially is the insanely fast day-night cycles. You'll see throughout this video that the day-night cycles changes are insanely fast, almost like three or four minutes and it's night, and it was like just morning a couple minutes ago. So you're wondering what is even happening. As well with graphical glitches, you can see sometimes that the floating barrels and crates that appear in the water will just suddenly spawn in out of nowhere. You have no idea what's happening. You're like, oh, I'm just sailing along. There's a crate right there. How did that even appear? And I also noticed throughout the game it, is that there really isn't any penalty for dying at all. I died several times when I played this and I didn't lose anything. The only thing you lose when you die in this game are your quests. But who cares about your quests because many of the towns have three or four quests on offer. So it doesn't really matter if you die and lose your quests because it really doesn't affect you at all. Unless you have an, an incredibly important quest then there's really not going to be any penalty. And going along with quests, you can see in the gameplay in the background that little white line. That white line, I think, is detrimental to this game because what the line does, essentially, is it takes your eyes away from the awesome visuals in this game. The visuals look amazing. I seriously feel like I'm sailing around an ocean and, I'm a, and I'm, I can be a pirate and sail throughout an entire ocean. But... All I'm doing when I'm sailing around is looking at this white line like I need to find my quest area and I think this is a serious problem because if you're not looking at the game you're not looking at all the effort that this that the art that the art team of this game really put in and you're just looking at this white line and you're really focused on the quest instead of looking around and experiencing all that the game has to offer so those are a few positive and negatives about this game and what I really concluded about this game through all of this is that I cannot see this game lasting very long once you buy it because the whole point is that you need to trade and do quests but the quests are exactly the same and trading is incredibly dull there is no bartering mechanic there is nothing that is really important about trading all you do is you look at rumors at towns Go to their car, go to their items that are for sale, buy the items, sail to the next uh, town over, sell those items that you bought at that other town, make like 65 gold in profit, which is nothing, cost uh, because ships cost almost 19,000 gold to get a decent one, and you're just doing that over and over and over. It will get extremely repetitive. And the problem with that is, if I don't care what I'm doing in a game, I've said this before, if I don't care what I'm doing in a game, chances are I'm not going to want to do it very long. I found myself getting incredibly bored around, around my third hour of playing this game because I felt that I was doing the exact same thing. And while your ship does look a little bit different because you can buy new ships, I did buy another ship, you can customize your ships to look pretty cool actually, but... The whole problem with it is the overarching problem is that you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And that is seriously going to be a problem if you decide to buy this game. 
So really overall, what are my opinions about the game? Well, overall I think Windward would be a questionable purchase. While I think it has great sound and art design, as well as a solid premise, the gameplay is really lackluster. Repetitive quests and very basic trading and combat systems make up all the base for all the gameplay, and these don't lend themselves well to the overall package, and they bring down the game in several areas. With several updates to create more quest variety and bring a new innovative trading and combat mechanic into the game, Windward could really improve immensely. So thank you guys for watching, this has been Daniel, and I will see you guys in the next review.